How do we know that quantum entanglement exists at such large distances as light years? Quantum entanglement is a, it's an idea, I suppose, that's um, shrouded in mystery and misunderstanding. And it's not surprising because it's a, it's kind of, it's a strange idea. Essentially, the idea is that there can be systems. So that means a, a collection of things, right? It could be two particles of light or it could be a very much more complex system uh, even human beings right but these systems um can be configured in such a way that information the information they contain uh, is distributed across potentially vast regions of space so the classic example would be two photons that are in what's called a state a quantum state so let's call it a configuration such that you could separate them by a light year, or two light years, or three light years. And they would still be in that configuration, which is a configuration that is so-called entangled. In other words, if you make measurements on this one, um, then it can change the probability that if you make measurements on this one, it will be something or other, spinning in a certain way or whatever it is. Uh, that's just the way the world is. Um, there's no statement about that being the way that the micro world is, that the subatomic world is. It's the way that the world is. Uh, quantum mechanics is a theory of everything. It's a theory that applies perfectly well to you and me and to planets and stars and galaxies. We have no indication in the theory saying that it only applies to small things. Um, now, it's a property an understood property of quantum mechanics, that the strange behavior kind of gets washed away as you get to big things, uh, because the big things get entangled with other big things and everything gets entangled together. And the outcome ultimately is the, is the more common sense world that we perceive. Although it's true to say that that's not really fully understood how that process happened, but it's reasonably well understood. But the key point about entanglement is that there's no statement at all that tells you that if you separate two things to large distances and nothing else interacts and gets entangled with them, that that entanglement should be broken. It's just really a statement about the way the system's configured. Um, in quantum systems, it turns out that the, 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 number of, the, the way things are configured, right, the way everything's set up, is much richer. There's much more scope than in what we call a classical system, which is just thinking of particles independent of each other. And that scope, that the way that information is distributed, is, is now in the 21st century considered to be a resource. It's the resource that we use in, for example, quantum computers, which exist, um, albeit in a primitive form, but which have tremendous potential. So it, there are laboratories in which we exploit quantum entanglement to, uh, and the richness of the information and the structure contained within it, um, that we exploit it to do very clever things, and we will do much more of that in the future. So it's a real, it's a real property of the universe. Professor Brian Cox, Horizons, a 21st century space odyssey, live on stage, using state-of-the-art LED screen technology. Theatres and arenas will be filled with images of faraway galaxies, alien worlds, supermassive black holes, and a time before the Big Bang.